Okay, so today's notes is going to cover lesson three and lesson four, and I'd like you to have some highlighters or colored pencils uh, for today. And I would pick, let's say, at least two colors. So pick two colors for today, either in a colored pencil or a highlighter. Okay, so let's start with lesson three. Lesson three is the graphs of functions, okay? And we get the graph uh, by either plotting points ourselves or typing it in the calculator and pressing the graph button. So reading at the top, and remember in a video, you feel free to pause it at any time, okay? You can speed me up if you know how to speed me up if I'm talking too slow. Um, so that means you can probably also slow me down if you need to as well. Okay, it says graphs are one of the most powerful ways of visualizing a function's rule because you can quickly read the outputs given the inputs. You can also easily see features such as a maximum and minimum output values. So let's underline maximum, minimum, and output values. Remember your output values are your y's. The maximum point, I'm going to change the thickness on my pen, the maximum is the highest point on the curve, where the minimum point is the lowest. Okay, so in exercise number one, we're given the function y equals f of x. So we really have no idea how the output um, is related to the inputs. We're just given a general graph, okay? Find each value, or find the value of each of the following. So this is a review, okay? So we're looking for f of four means as a point, so let's put the point down below, okay? When x is four, what is y? And then f of negative one as a point is when x is negative one, what's the y? So let's go over to the graph. When x is 4, so starting from the origin or at 0, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So the curve is right here. And I'm going to write that point on the side. That point is 4, 1. So f of 4 is equal to 1. f of negative 1, so let's count to the left 1 from the origin and go up to the curve. That's right here. And that point is negative 1, 6. So f of negative 1 is 6. Part B says for what value or values of x, so that's plural, does our f of x, again f of x is another way of saying y equals negative 2, illustrate on the graph. So y value of negative 2, let's go to the y-axis, here's negative 1, here's negative 2. Going across, we have this point here and this point here. When I write those coordinates down, that's the point 1, negative 2 and 3, negative 2. So the x values where that occurs is x equals 1 and x equals 3. And last, state the minimum, so it's our lowest, and maximum values, that's our highest. And when they say values, we want the y. So let's look at the highest and lowest points. Well, the highest point was right here, and that was the point negative 1, 6. So here's our max, and then here's our min, our lowest point whose coordinates are 2, negative 3. So the output values of the function, the lowest is negative 3, and the highest is 6. So the maximum value is 6, and the minimum value is negative 3. So if you need to write this down, pause it so you can copy everything down, and then unpause it when you are ready. I need to adjust um, 
zoom so that I can scroll down to the bottom now. All right, this example here. So reading right here, it says, so if we can read a graph to produce outputs or our y values if we're given their inputs, then we should be able to reverse the process and produce a graph of the function from its algebraically expressed rule. So consider the rule or the function given by this rule. So now the name of our function is g of x. Remember, it can be f of x, p of x, c of x. So now we're going to take, our rule says to take the x values, double them, and then add 3. So you can see all of our x values here are being doubled. So they're already substituted or plugged in. So we just need to do the calculations. Double negative 3, I'm going to do all the doubles first. Double negative 3, we get negative 6. Double negative 2, we get negative 4. Double negative 1, we get negative 2. Double 0, 0. Double 1 is 2. Double 2 is 4. Double uh, 3 is 6. Now I'm going to add 3 to each one. All right. I don't know why there's not a y column, but um, negative 6 plus 3 is a negative 3. So that will give us the point negative 3, negative 3. Negative 4 plus 3 is a negative 1. So that gives us the point negative 2, negative 1. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So that gives us the point negative 1, 1. Uh, 0 plus 3 is 3. So that gives us the point 0, 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. So that gives us the point uh, 1, 5. And then 4 plus 3 is 7. So putting the x value of 2, y value of 7 together, we have the point 2, 7. And then 6 plus 3 is 9, which gives us the point 3, 9. So let's plot all of those points. So you don't need to look up here uh, at me. I'll tell you uh, when to look up if you are listening to the notes so you can see if your line matches mine. So right now I'm going to plot all of those points. Okay, you can look up here, or pause it if you still need to do some plotting. Now I'm going to connect it with a straight line. So I'm going to open up the line tool. Uh, you should be using a straight edge. So if you don't have a ruler, uh, please grab a ruler. Oh, I don't want to graph in white. I need to change the line to orange. So we should go all the way through. So extend at both ends, put an arrow as a line or linear function does extend infinitely, and we label. So our function was g of x equals 2x plus 3. Okay? So in the first part, we evaluated the graph and defined what a maximum value is and a minimum value, so high and low y values. And then we took a function rule, okay, created a table in order to graph it. Moving on to number three, we're also going to create or fill in a table and graph it. But this time we're going to have a different type of function. So at the top, it says never forget that all we need to do is translate between an equation and a graph, is to plot our input and output pairs accordingly to whatever rule we are given. So we're going to look at a nonlinear function, and that's a quadratic, so a new function. And it's a quadratic because the exponent is a two. So this is called a degree two expression, and those are quadratics. So we're going to fill out the uh, table. You can see it says the rule says to take the x and square it. So each x value has been written over, and now we just need to square it in order to determine our y value. So negative three squared is a positive nine. That's our y. Negative two squared, because it's negative two times negative two is four. Negative 1 squared 1, 0 squared 0, 1 squared 1, 2 squared 4, 3 squared 9. So putting the x and y together, we now have the following points. Negative 3, 9, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 
3, 9. Now, one thing about a quadratic function is you will see the repeated y values. So we see we got a 1 and a 1, a 4 and a 4, a 9 and a 9. Okay, we can't see repeated x or else it wouldn't be a function. So let's plot the points and then look up here when I tell you to make sure your points match up with mine. All right, so left 3, up 9. Okay, look up here. Pause if you still need to graph. And then we're going to draw the best we can a smooth U-shaped curve. Okay, so the graph of a quadratic is a U-shaped curve. Okay, now we're going to do one more graphing by hand. And that is a piecewise function, okay? So it says here that sometimes the functions rule get all sorts of funny and can include piecewise defined. So piecewise defined means our graph's going to be in pieces, okay? These functions have different rules for different values of x, and these separate rules combine to make a larger and more complicated rule. Let's try to feel, get a feel for one of these. So here's our function. I'm going to move that down. Our function is essentially broken up into two rules, okay? And they're based on the values of x in the table. So let's look at the table for all the values less than 0. Which values are those? So that would be these three. So for x less than 0, we're going to use the rule 2x plus 6. OK, so if you have one color, we're going to do one part of the graph. Is we're going to use the two different colors. And in this case, to me, blue. And then in the other part, I'm going to use orange. So you would use your other color. And those are for x values 0 and larger. So that's for those, x greater than or equal to 0. We're going to do the rule 6 minus x. OK, so let me grab the blue. So for x less than 0, I'm going to, again, double the x and add 6. So double negative 3. I didn't write very nicely. Add 6. Double negative 2, add 6. Double negative 1, add 6. Well, this ends up being, I'm going to do all the doubles first. Double negative 3 is negative 6. Double negative 2 is negative 4. Double negative 1 is negative 2. And now when I add 6, we get 0. Add 6, we get 2. Add 6, we get 4. So the points I need to plot are negative 3, 0, negative 2, 2, and negative 1, 4. So let's plot those. So negative 3, 0. We're right on the x-axis. Negative 2, 2, negative 1, 4. Now, since those values included everything below 0, we could even do like negative a half right, a quarter, so on and so forth. So what that means is at zero, whatever that point is, um, we would have an open circle here. And since the pattern is up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, that point would land right there. So I'm going to get rid of that, those markings. And I'm going to go back and add the open circle, OK? So now with your straight edge, let's connect those points. Now we don't go all the way through. We're going from 0 to the left, as this states right here. So I guess it's orange, but I want it in blue. So we start here and go through these points. So less than 0, I can line that up better, is to the left. Okay, let's put an arrow, and then let's label. So that's the function, or the piece, f of x equals 2x plus 6. All right, now in orange, I'm going to do the 6 minus x. So I'm just going to take away whatever the x value is from 6. 
So 6 minus 0 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. 6 minus 2 is 4. This is an easy one. 6 minus 3 is 3. So the points are 0, 6, um, 1, 5, 2, 4. Oops, that's sloppy. And 3, 3. So 0, 6. Well, that point, and again, greater than or equal to is shaded to the right. So this actually gets filled in by the other function. And then 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So you can see the pattern is down, 1, over, 1, down, 1, over, 1, down, 1, over, 1, down, 1, over, and so on and so forth. So I can continue going down, 1, over, 1 if we want. And then I'm going to grab the line tool and connect those. So there are the two pieces. Notice it's not one straight line, but it's two half lines put together. Okay, so I just need to finish with an arrow and label f of x equals 6 minus x. Okay, oh, I skipped one thing, <laughs> part A, which I guess is good because um, in doing the table, it makes A really easy. So when x is 4, what's the y? So we're looking for the point 4 what? So when x is 4, oh, I don't see that. Uh, but I do see um, the negative 3 from our table. So when x is negative 3, that's this point right here, f of negative 3 is 0. So since I don't see that in my table, uh, we're going to do it by hand. Okay? So by hand, f of 4, well, let's go over the function, 4 is greater than or equal to 0. So I have to plug it into this one. So we're just going to do 6 minus 4, which is 2. So f of 4 equals 2. All right, one last page. OK, lesson 4. OK, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at graphical features. So the graphs are going to be provided, okay? So have your color pencils or highlighters handy. And reading at the top, it says there is a lot of terminology or vocab associated with the graph of a function. Many of the terms have names that are descriptive, but still work is needed to master the ideas. So let's take a look at the first graph. Okay, this graph um, has many valleys and peaks valley, peak, and stops. Okay, it does not have arrows. So it does not go uh, forever to the left and forever to the right, so I am going to put two dots there. Okay, we don't know the rule per se, so it's just a general graph as it says the function y equals f of x is shown over the interval negative 7 to 7 for the x. So if we look on the x-axis, starting at 0, let's count to the left, negative 1, Negative 2, negative 3, 5, 6, 7. We can see it starts at negative 7, and then it goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's the x values for which it's graphed. Okay? Let me grab a different color. Find the maximum or high point and minimum low point, again, y values of the function. Max and min outputs. And then state the x values where that occurred. Well, the highest point on the curve is right here. So this is a max whose coordinates are negative 1, 3. So our maximum output value is 3, because it's the y value, when x is negative 1. The minimum, so the lowest point on the curve is right here, and that has the coordinates negative 5 negative 5. So the lowest y value is negative 5 when x is negative 5. What is the y-intercept of the function? Now the y-intercept is the y value 
where the function crosses the y-axis. So this is right at 2. So our y-intercept is 2. Explain, whoops, there's a line for that. Pay attention, Mrs. Simons. Explain why a function cannot have more than y-intercept, more than 1. So let me move this up. I still want to keep the graph, but so if, let's write, if a function cross the x-axis, I'm not the x-axis, but the y-axis, because y-intercept. So if a function cross the y-axis more than once, That would mean the x value repeats. So an example would be, say, the point 0, 2, and 0, 3. Say it crossed twice. It crossed the y-axis at 2 and 3. We would have two repeating x values. Um, and let's make a note that x cannot repeat given a function. It would no longer be a function. Okay? Now in part C, let me grab, uh, grab light blue. It says give the x-intercepts. They're also known as the function 0 because that's where the y value, remember f of x stands for y, where y is 0. Now, we are not going to state um, what they are because there's a bad graph here, and that was my fault. The graph accidentally got shifted down. So we're going to state how many there are. So there's one here, and you can see we can't tell what that value is. There's one here. We can't tell what that value is. Here and here. So we have four x-intercepts. If it was a better graph, we could actually state what those values are, so I apologize. Okay? Now, part D. Would you characterize the function as increasing or decreasing on the domain interval negative 5 to negative 1? Remember, that interval can also be written um, an interval notation, so it'll be parenthesis because there's no equal to, negative 5 to negative 1, also parenthesis. Now, when we characterize the function, we're characterizing the y values. So let me grab a highlighter and highlight the part of the curve from negative 5 to 1. Well, here's an x value of negative 5 right here. So negative 5 to 1, or a negative 1, is going to go right here. I thought I grabbed the highlighter, but it looks like I'm on pen. So this part of the curve, well, if we actually take a look at the y values, we actually have two y values that are already there. We have a negative 5 to 3. We went from negative to positive. So that means the y values got larger or increased. So that is increasing. And let's move that up because it says explain your choice. And it's because as the x values increase, which they're always going to increase in going from left to right, um, the y values increase. Okay? And then in part E, we're going to name one additional interval over which the function's increasing and then decreasing. So let's go back up. One other place where it's going up. So I'm going to say from here to here, our y values are going up. Here's a y value um, of negative, sorry, negative 2. That's the point um, 2, negative 2. And then we go to the point 5, 1. Our y values got bigger. Okay, so we're going to put, I'm going to put here from 2, less than x, less than 5. Now the symbols will always be going that way, 
Um, and we don't include the equal to because right here at 2, you can put dots there, it's flat. It's not increasing, and here it's flat. It's laying flat, so it's not increasing or decreasing, so we don't include the equal to sign there. And if you're more comfortable, um, you can write it in interval notation, which would be parenthesis 2, comma, well, I keep dragging the pen. So 2, comma, 5, parenthesis. And then I need one interval where it's decreasing, and where the graph's going down. So I'm going to use this one right in the middle. So from here to here. This x value is negative 1. This x value is 2. So from negative 1, less than x, symbols stay the same direction, less than 2. Or we can write negative 1, comma, 2. Now we're going to take a look at the turning points on the curve. So that's where every time the curve changes direction. And then each of those can be considered a high point or low point. Because of my bad graph, I, we need to change all of these points. So let's change this one to negative 5, negative 5. This one to negative 1, 3. And we'll see in a second. This one's just 2, negative 2, so just insert the negative symbol. And then this one is 5, 1. Those are all of the points where the curve changes directions. So let's go back up to the curve, OK? I've yet to use red, so I'm going to use red. So I'm going to start on the left. And I trace along, and we're looking for high and low points. Well, I hit my first low point right here at negative 5, 5. So negative 5, negative 5, rather, is a low point. So negative, neg uh, negative 5, negative 5 is a low point or minimum point. Let's go back up to the curve. So we were going down or decreasing. Now we're increasing to this point right here. That's a high point. And we said earlier that's where our maximum value was. So negative 1, 3 is a max point. Let's keep tracing along the curve. Uh, now we're decreasing to a low point. 2, negative 2, increasing to a high point and decreasing again. So 2, negative 2 is a low point, where 5, 1 is a high point. OK, this seems pretty easy. Last page. Looks like we're going to take the time here uh, and get more practice with the piecewise function and its terminology. So have your two colors handy. Because I have the red, uh, for all values less than 1, less than or equal to, we're going to do x plus 3. So let's go over to the curve. Less than or equal to 1. Those are these. And the rule is to just add 3 to the x. All right, so we take negative 4, add 3. Negative 3, add 3. Negative 2, add 3. 0 plus 3, and then 1 plus 3. So we're going to get our y, and then put it together for our x's. So negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 0 plus 3 is 3. And 1 plus 3 is 4. So we have negative 4, negative 1. Putting it together, negative 3 is 0. Um, negative 2, 1. Negative 1, 2, 0, 3, and 1, 4. So let's plot those points. Negative 4, negative 1. So feel free to do it on your own and then look up here. Now, uh, less than or equal to 1, so add an x value of 1, which would be right here. We're going to do a closed circle. Okay? Grab your straight edge. So look up here and check your points. Grab your straight edge, and we will connect. Now, we're shading less than or equal to 1, or graphing, which is to the left. Okay? Let's put an arrow and label. So f of x equals x plus 3. Now I'm going to grab, we'll do blue. 
sort of a patriotic, red, white, and blue. So the x value is greater than or equal to 1. Well, there's a typo here that I didn't catch. There should not be the same symbol. Okay, so let's grab uh, and let's change this one to greater than 1. So I'm going to take the white pen and get rid of it. So that should be um, greater than. It should not be, they should both not have the equal to symbol. Okay. So all the values greater than 1 would be 2, 3, and 4. And the rule is 6 minus 2 times x. So I double the x and subtract it from 6. So I'm going to put 6 minus for all three of these. And then we double the x. So double 2, double 3, and double 4. All right, my y values. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, so 6 minus 4 is 2, which gives us the point 2, 2. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0, so that gives us the point 3, 0. And 2 times 4 is 8. 6 minus 8 is negative 2. So the point is 4, negative 2. So let's plot. Uh, right 2, up 2. 2, 2. 1, 2, 3, 0. 4, negative 2. And you can see the pattern is down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. So we're going to plot some more points. Down 2 over 1 would be this one, down 2 over 1, this one, down 2 over 1, this one. And it's got to go all the way up um, because it includes all those values just greater than 1. So there would be an open circle here, but that red fills it. So line up your straight edge and connect. Just going to sketch that by hand. And this is f of x equals 6 minus 2x. All right, now we're going to fill b through g in, in regards to this picture. So pause if you need some more time to graph, and then unpause when you're ready to look at b. b says to state the zeros of the function. Now the zeros from the previous page were when y is 0, and that is an x-intercept. We weren't able to tell on the previous note page, so we just noted how many there were. But let's see if we can see what those numbers are here. So the graph crosses the x-axis right here at negative 1, 2, negative 3, and crosses the x-axis here at 1, 2, 3. So our zeros are x equals negative 3 and x equals 3. Okay. State the function's y-intercept. All right, what's the y-value where it crosses the axis? That's right here at 3. We can also see it in our table here, because anywhere on the y-axis, x is 0. So the y-intercept is 3. Let's scroll down to E. Um, I'm actually going to scroll down because we won't be able to see the graph. But E says give the coordinates of the one turning point. Yes, there's only one turning point here. Um, if I trace, we're increasing. It peaks here at this point, whose coordinates are 1, 4. And then it starts to decrease. It says to give the coordinates and classify it. Well, that's a high point. It went from going up, reached our peak, and then came down. D, give the interval over which the function is increasing. Well, we stated the left side was increasing and the right side decreasing. It was left of the x number 1. Remember right here at the peak, it's laying flat. So left of 1 is increasing. Greater than 1 is decreasing. So left of 1 would be x less than 1. Greater than 1 is to the right of 1. As far as um, interval rotation, remember, if we're going to the left, that's negative infinity up to 1. And then if we're going to the right, that's 1 all the way to positive infinity. All right, last one. So let's read f, and then we'll go back up to the curve. f says to use your graph to find all solutions to the equation where f of x is equal to 2. So wants to know 
all solutions or the x values where, again, f of x is y equals 2. Illustrate graphically and find evidence. So let's grab uh, this yellow color. y is equal to 2. So let's go to 2 on our y-axis. So 1, 2. And to the left is this point. To the right is this point. So it wants to know the, well, let's first write those points, and then we'll answer the question. So let's do that in green. So this point right here at a y value of 2 is negative 1, 2, and 2, 2. So let's move that down. Negative 1, 2. And 2, 2 are the points. So to find the x values where that happens, that's at x equals negative 1, right here, and x equals 2, right here. Last, state the interval over which the function is positive. How can you tell? Well, the function, again, refers to the y values. And y values are positive above the x-axis, okay? If you look at your y-axis, the values are negative when you go below it. So the part of the curve where, what color can I use? Let's use the pink, this pink. The part of the curve that's above the x-axis is right here. And that goes from an x value of negative 3 to an x value of 3. Okay, it's above the x-axis from negative 3 to 3. To write that in equality notation, negative 3 to 3, that would be written like this. Again, remember the symbols are always in the same direction. Or an interval notation, negative 3 to 3 is like that. Why do we not include the equal to? Well, right here on the x-axis, it's not above it. And right here on the x-axis, it's not above it. So it would be on the x-axis at that x value. So that's why we don't include the equal sign. Now let's just note that negative, to finish, let's write it down below, negative means the function is below the x-axis. And that is it for today. I hope that you had a good day today. Feel free to go back and re-watch these notes if you need to. Okay, I will also be going over this information tomorrow. So the only thing you have remaining to do is your self-check and please uh, try your best and please check off something on the right side so I know where we need to start tomorrow. Um, and then you're done. And I will be here tomorrow for our practice day in which we will practice everything that you watched today in your notes. So we'll see you tomorrow.